to another facility update. Man, it's loud in here. What is going on? I think it's coming from the men's bathroom. Are you drilling holes in the wall? I figured it's a good pastime on board, so just poke, poke, poke. That's what you do when you're bored? Uh, maybe. Oh, good. I okay. measured them at least. Uh, at least they're evenly spaced. Yeah. Okay. Well, welcome to another facility update where we drill holes in the wall. Let's see what Ed was actually doing in the men's bathroom. Oh, that's Good. ah! Look, I covered the holes I made. That looks great. Yeah. And support 50 pounds apparently. All right. Well, up to a 50-pound baby can sit in there and get its yeah. diaper changed. That's nice and sturdy too. Awesome. Now we have one in both bathrooms. Yes. Should we show them what else we've been working on? Sure. All right, and get out of this echoey bathroom. Yeah. Whoa, now I'm on this side of the camera. Whoa, magic. Crazy. So this is what we've been working on the last three days straight. Actually, even last weekend, too, even we were working on this, yeah. Too. We didn't film much of it because we thought it'd be kind of boring to watch. So it probably wasn't the best thing to be working in the cage under Emily. <laughs> Don't, you're fine. All right, I'll just stay down here. Is the saw supposed to smoke when you're doing this? No. It was totally boring. It was, and it was not fun. This was my least favorite thing we've had to do with the zoo so far. Yeah. Lights. Lighting. We, we made these cages and hand snipped them to size. And now we can take the UVB lamp for all the animals and drop it in from above, as well as the basking lamp over there. And if the bulb ever needs to be changed or when it needs to be changed, instead of going into the enclosure and taking down the grate, we can just reach in from above and swap out the bulb and stick it back in through the hole. But what are we gonna do for the bottom ones that we can't do that with? I don't know, what are we gonna do? A similar thing. But this is all accessible from the inside because we can't reach from above because there's an enclosure up there. Yep. So instead we have clips. Yeah, clips yeah. and hinges. So when the clips are all done, this comes down because it's on a hinge, and then you can take the bulbs out, swap them, put them back in, and clip it back up into place. Yep. It seemed like the best solution for the weird situation we had here. Yeah. But it'll work. It didn't, it worked. It was very hard to get these up though. Yeah, this was not these fun. These clips and these hinges were not fun to do. No, they were and not. And the many hours we spent folding folding this wire which we all have scratches we've looked like we've been hanging out with kittens on our arms there's scratches emily's got scratches it's been fun oh yeah fun is and not the right word currently right now i think we have this whole wall done yep. which is nice we have the anaconda slash monitor slash whatever's going to be going in this cage done something else that we've been doing actually mandy's been doing mandy built a cool ledge in the anaconda enclosure yep so this was our solution to covering up the transition between gray panel and brown panel so now we can have a uh, tiny in here when he's big enough for this enclosure I don't yeah, know he'll actually do. eat yeah, if he eats in it. That's the yeah. thing is if it's too big, he doesn't like to eat. So we'll figure something out. But once he's in here, what Mandy and I were imagining was Tiny could be cruising around, come up here, and then he could be like right behind the glass. And of course he's going to not go any further and he's going to be like, bloop, into the water. But still, that'll like encourage him to be out and uh, this adds some volume to the anaconda enclosure. Yeah. This is uh, our new look for the turtle pond. Yep. I think the vines are going to stay. Yeah, we're going to get swinging turtles. Yeah. Put like little loops hanging down here and they'll jump through it and they get treats. Yep, exactly. Like SeaWorld. Or we're waiting for silicone to dry and we're using no. these as braces. Don't tell them the truth. <laughs> Mandy has built a lot of these frames already, which look amazing. Yep. We've decided to hire uh, an outside party to do the rest of them because we feel bad that Mandy's doing so much framing work. And I know she likes decorating and doing other things. So we have someone else doing the rest of those. We decided that, you know, we've been so busy and this is taking so long that we need a couple extra helping hands. Mm -hmm. So we did hire a small business local to our area and they're gonna help out a little bit with some of the woodwork here. We're also, well, I mean, for the lights, we're doing like all Arcadia stuff. Yep. For all the snakes, all the lizards, everything is getting this because it's, in my opinion, the nicest 
uh, UVB lighting out yep. there. And the bulbs only have to be changed once a year instead of once yep. every six to eight months like the other brands. So this will be, require less maintenance for us to only have to change the bulbs once a year. We might be doing something different for the Exoterras, but that's Here's a future video if we can get a hold of that and yeah. do that. So. We've actually been in talks with John Courtney Smith of Arcadia. We had a whole discussion on what the right lighting would be, and he helped walk us through all the correct lamps, and we calculated all the distances versus the percentages that we needed. So now we just have to make them fit. And now, Toothless, the adoptable bearded dragon, is going to give us a tour of Adoption Island and what's currently inside of it. We have Captain Crunch, a leopard gecko, hiding in there. I'm not going to take them all out because that would take forever. We have Carly, a leopard gecko who was lost in a car and then found in that car, alive and doing well. She's somewhere in there. We have Jules, another leopard gecko who loves mealworms in here, probably hiding in that human hide back there. We have Pluto, a wonderful ball python, who's hiding in his cave. Yes, aren't you, Pluto? We have Cosmo, a ball python over here, who's scrunched up under a half log. Who else, Toothless? Oh, we have your girlfriend. Not really, but Ness, a female bearded dragon who loves to poop in her water dish and smear poop on the glass, as you can see. We've got Applejack, another ball python who's, oh, there he is. Oh, there's his little nose poking out. You're really cute, too. Down here we have two box turtles, an eastern who's sitting in the food dish, and a three-toed who's probably under his favorite piece of cork bark back there. And that's only half of Adoption Island, right, Toothless? Yeah, let's go to the other side. Over here we have Marigold, who's a little leopard gecko who we're keeping an eye on. She's not currently at Adoption because we want to make sure she's eating regularly for us first. We've got the proud Espresso sitting on... Oh, look at that basking face. That's awesome. Okay, Espresso's doing well. We've got Crow, a.k.a. Squeakers, who's... Wow! who's actually out. All right, a leopard gecko, that's out, go figure. And then we have over here another ball python named Nebula. Uh, I don't see Nebula, I think she's under that hide back there. I don't wanna disturb her though. You've got Java, a leatherback bearded yeah. dragon with a stubby tail. He's also been super like head bobby. I wonder if I can get him to do it. Oh, there he goes. Yeah. yeah. Head bobbing away. Yeah, he loves to head bob at people. Last but not least, we have what we believe to be, right, Toothless? Yeah, we think we have our very first eastern bearded dragon that was surrendered. Look at how long and lanky she is. The uh, typical bearded dragon you see in captivity are the central bearded dragons, which are plumper dragons. They have a shorter face, more vibrant colors, and I mean, he's a, he's a really pretty example, too, yeah. on top of Generally, it. Generally, they look like him. Generally closer to that, so a more distinguished pattern. Uh, so yeah, central bearded dragon is what we typically keep. But this, we are pretty sure, is the eastern bearded dragon. They have a longer pointier head, just an overall lankier body, a less pronounced pattern, less color. You are one special dragon, aren't you, Latte? And uh, Java is still head bobbing at us. Are you the king? Yes. Oh, Yes, I am. Yes, he is. <laughs> oh, he is definitely the king. <laughs> He's such a show off. He's going to be Java. fun when he gets adopted. Yeah, you will. So I'm down here putting that in place. And I stand up. I'm working. No. I swear I am. What are you looking at? Oh, um, comments on the Blue Beauty video. <laughs> and eating. Mm-hmm. I'm. I can get a break sometimes. No, you're an owner. You don't get a break. Right. I'm almost done with this. That's good. Look at that. I'm just making it extra secure so it. Yeah. Oh, wait. We can't say that yet, can we? <laughs> We're just making it extra secure so that whatever animal we put in here doesn't get out. Yeah, it's exactly. Almost <laughs> spilled those. Okay, you guys know our friend Shiraz in Pakistan who has a company selling <laughs> reptile supplies. We sell his hooks and some uh, hides and water dishes, stuff like that. Well, oops. There it all goes. Here's an example of like a grabber he sent to uh, used to feed the retics. Oh yeah, Ed uses this for some bigger snakes. And Shiraz decided to throw in an extra goodie for our consideration. Okay, hang on, I have to back up. What the heck, Shiraz? What would you use this for? That's the biggest grabber I've ever seen. I can, I can grab the audience from way over. Yeah, there. and you're like six feet away yeah. from me. That is crazy. Do you think for like adult king cobras or black mambas because they're so smart? Maybe. Or big retics that are aggressive. Maybe. That's just ridiculous. Holy cow. I mean, in all fairness though, let's take a little stroll into the zoo over here. We have, if we're feeding, we can just slide the glass open, go way over here and grab the rodent, and we can even feed them way over there. Oh, that's true. It'll make our lives a lot yeah. easier. What do you have? 
Hmm? Oh, this is Hubert. Is that a fly? Yeah. Don't worry, he's on a leash. You actually put a <laughs> leash on him? How and why? I, a magician oh, never <laughs> reveals their secrets. You want to know whose hair that is. That's is mine. that a hair? Yes, it's yours? <laughs> I know so you... it's not mine. I'm pretty confident. <laughs> I have so many questions. Mandy. Oh, there he yeah. goes. On a scale of alive to dead. He's, a lot, he's grooming himself. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, he's totally oh, no, grooming himself. Enough. I didn't just tie a dead fly to a hair, all right? <laughs> I mean... He's kind of cute. He's got some iridescence on him. Hi, Sorry, Hubert. <laughs> Do you want to explain yourself? I may as well watch the car. Yes. <laughs> That's what I was afraid you were gonna do the entire time you were up there. You were asking for it. So I dropped the hose so I could go turn it off and it would shrink, but what'd you say it looked like? It looks like a snake that you just forced out of a meal and it's trying to like regurgitate it back out. <laughs> it's doing a good job. Yeah, it is. It's getting everything out. It's getting a lot of water out. So what are we doing at the facility today? It's our day off. New project is starting today. So we came in on our day off to show you what before looks like yep. before it changes to after tomorrow. So we are redoing the parking lot. Yep. Because if you look around, you'll notice this is an old kind of rundown parking lot. And we don't know where to park because the lines yeah. have all worn away. Before, I mean, you can kind of see the line. Here's a line. Yep, there was one. And then it goes to like a walking area. See the diagonals where it says like no parking here? Yeah. These diagonals, there's like a hallway of them that go all the way down. And then with lines on either side. So we're pretty sure customers used to take like a cart full of grass Plants. or seed or yeah. I don't know it was a garden center and they just wheel it down this little central aisle to their cars maybe yeah I don't know but there's no parking spots in no this parking there's, lot. there's one oh yeah right there yeah, you can see it over there so yeah. we kind of make up where we park every day yeah we try and park right like in this spot to start the parking and then then customers finish the line which is great they kind of catch on to it but I feel bad parking right in front of our gate every day to start that line so it'll be nice to have distinguished lines so everybody just knows where to go. Yes. Plus the city is asking us to have lines, um, which makes sense. They're asking yeah. us to have a lined parking lot. We also get puddles in our parking lot, which isn't good, I hear. So we figured it would just be best long term to have it resurfaced instead of just lines on top then the rest of the parking lot is still old. Yeah. So today they cleaned off the parking lot, so it's actually never been cleaner. Yeah, so as you can kind of see, like we're getting a puddle over there and a puddle there and a puddle there. So they said they're grinding down the high spots, which we can actually see over here if you want to take a little bit of a walk. This is what they're planning on doing. It's gonna go all the way from the Century Road down to the back of the parking lot and then out to the other side of the road. Yeah, so like the whole thing. Yeah. We are not looking forward to this yeah. bill. Thankfully, we kind of budgeted for this bill. We did, yeah. yeah. We knew it had to be done. It was part of some things, so. Yeah. But it also will make our parking lot no longer have like these, the which is just a patch or anything like that, and it'll get rid of all these cracks. I don't know if they're gonna be able to fix that. Well, how about that? That they should be able to fix, because okay. that's part of the parking lot. All right, we'll see what it looks like after tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow's gonna be a big day for them. So we have a lot of noise going on outside. It is noisy, and I had to come in through the back door. We can't use our front no, door No, not right now. Do you want to show them why? Yeah, look, look, look. Wait, if I open it, it's going to get really loud. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yes, we got people out there with shirts off. Oh, yeah. Shirtless guys doing parking lot. <laughs> it's a lot of work. This is so cool. Yeah, it is. It already looks so much better. Yes, it does. Oh, I can't wait to see what it's done. Yeah. But it's less noisy. But it's less noisy. It's really loud. Look, all the potholes have been fixed. Yeah. Oh, it's still soft. Oh, that is squishy. Oh, no. Oh, no, your footprints. What's with you leaving footprints everywhere? I don't know. Do you or think it... they'll let me ride the steamroller? Maybe. Oh, there's two of them now. All right, so Emily's learning how to drive the steamroller, I guess. <laughs> Wow, that looks amazing. Woo! We have a pretty good looking parking lot now. Now everyone's gonna actually know where to park here. Yeah. And they turned these sideways. So these used to be like that way against the yeah, side and they 
parallel. Yeah, parallel parking, and now they come out so we can fit more cars in there. That's awesome, that was a good idea. Huge shout out to Midwest Roads and Parking Lots. Like, they did a fantastic job. They got here within a week of us talking to them, so they got it done super fast, and it looks amazing. Wow, look at that view. So that means these first two will be the handicap parking spots. We have to get like the stamp on there still. And then look at what they did over here. Remember that huge pothole that was right here at the gate? Well, now it's completely fixed. Hey. That looks so good. Now people in wheelchairs won't get stuck. Yeah, now there won't be any like turbulence on the way up to yeah. the ramp. Because, I mean, people were able to get to the ramp before, but we felt bad and we worried that there would be troubles with there being there was like... a toad here. Oh, a toad already christened the parking lot. Dang it, toads. It would be a toad, too. Yeah. Poops on our parking lot. Brand new parking lot. A toad has to poop on it. I also really like what they did around the pillars. Oh, yeah. They did an amazing job around the pillars. Wow, they did a fantastic job around the pillars. I was a little worried about how that would turn out, but they pulled it off. That looks great. All right, next up for Rex's enclosure, we've got the substrate going. We need uh, another roll of paneling there for the substrate in the back. And we have to make some sort of access door back here so that we can get in and out because in the front, this is all gonna be solid glass. I was originally thinking, well, maybe like a split door type thing because when Rex is excited for food, she runs at you. And I wouldn't want her just to run out of the door. You can just have the food ready. Just have the food ready yeah. and be like, here, take it! Or have like a, a, a shield or something. Yeah. So, Mandy has a great idea though. What What are your thoughts? Uh, okay, so imagine like one of those Dutch doors where you've got the top opens and you've still got like a horse barrier or whatever, and then the bottom opens. But rather than have two very visible pieces on like the zoo side of things, we have one main door that'll open up, but hidden behind it, we'll have a Rex barrier door that will just live back here and then you like ch -ch -ch unlatch it and then you can open up the whole thing. You think a tall barrier? Yeah, she climbs, she jumps well, this up is this not high. To scale. I understand that, but I know like this is yeah. higher than her thing is right now. Okay. And she jumps close to the top. She can really jump pretty high. high, yeah, that's true. But even any barrier at all would yeah. really help Some keep barrier. her back. I think we're onto something though. Yeah, figure it out. And this is what the conversation turned into. You're, all the footage you're getting is not of us being productive, but of us goofing off. It's going to make us look no, like no, we never do Mandy, anything. Mandy, Mandy, we've done a lot of footage without you here that's okay. been productive. <laughs> it's only when I'm here. That yeah, I'm here. yeah. That we're no uh, longer productive. That was a close one. Catch. Oh. Uh, <laughs> ah. Uh, <laughs> there's common people. Oh. oh you can. I can feel it. This one is the one. Now you fixed it. <laughs> oh, well, this is gonna go on for a while. Yeah, you might as well leave. Yep. Well, before we install the little door into Rex's enclosure, I think first we should install a big door for the hallway. What do you think? Probably. All right, let's figure that out first. Now we're just going to install a lock and then we can flap or flip the flap over and staple it to the door and it'll blend right in. So next on our list is installing the pop-up tunnel in Rex's enclosure. We are getting the glass installed in most of the enclosures throughout next week, so it's crunch time to get this done. Uh, where are we gonna put it? The whole disc fits there really yeah. well. Plus then, if we're like feeding her through the door we have to make over there, kids could poke their heads up and be really close to her Watching eating. Her eat. Yeah, and that... we have like eight kids all cramming in there to see her eat. Yeah, oh, I can't wait to see that in use. Alrighty, here are our thoughts. This is, I think, gonna work the best for her setup because we want this to be open for a basking area because we're gonna put a basking light there. Then she'll be right behind the glass when she's out basking in the sun. And then she can slide into the tank here and be very visible here. We've got a rock here that's gonna hide the filtration or the drainage back there. And we've got the pop-up behind it and a cypress stump to kind of hide the door that we're gonna build back there. We have a big rock back there with a bit of a dark spot in the corner so that if she needs to retreat and kind of like hide, she needs to chill from too many people, she can do that. And yeah, I think the combination of cypress stumps and rocks balances it all out.
All right, now does it work? Kind of. I think we're stuck over here on the paneling. Oh yeah. All right, so after a couple hours of work, we now have a door for Rex. Hey, it works. Yeah. Nice. So now we can get Rex in and out of here. Yeah, and I think it's a big enough door to like easily maneuver too. Yeah. We do have uh, some dangers that we have to deal with. Yeah. There we go. Cool, I think we need a handle here. Yeah, I also have a lock. So in case somehow somebody gets into that door, they can't, they get, can't in. get into Rex. Makes sense. Or Rex can't get out. We'll treat Rex like Harry Potter. Lock her in her room. Yeah. Here's what it looks like from inside the enclosure. We're gonna paint that plywood black so it disappears. Open her up. Yeah. Hooray. We haven't taken this off the dome yet. That's, we're gonna wait on that. Yeah, no sense in scratching it up during construction. Yeah, may as well wait till the end to reveal the dome. Yeah. Cool, why don't you close it up? All right. Nice. Well, get ready for a busy couple of days because our friend Paul with Custom Reptile Habitats is here yet again, and he brought these. These are the invert enclosures that are gonna go back in the invert cave. You can't see it from here. Well, I guess I'm in a bad position, but here they are, and what we're going to do is this. Oh, they look so awesome. To you, it might just look like a black box, but he installed, he made these custom for our invert cave. There's locks here and an access panel here, and these are gonna fit in those openings in our invert cave. And then from behind, we'll be able to access them and feed the animals, and all the public will see is that opening there. So these turned out great. Those are awesome. They are so cool. So we have the like 20 gallon long version and the 10-ish gallon version. Yeah, so we are actually going to custom cut some backgrounds from Universal Rocks. This is the underside. That's what it actually looks like. It's just easier to mark it on the back. But we're gonna cut those for three sided backgrounds for each one of these and go from there. Well, for the past few days, we have not been working much in the zoo. Well, we kind of have, but this is what we've been, been actually working on. The invert cave, because look, the invert enclosures are almost done and they look amazing. But that means we have to switch gears and our friends Jackson and Carrie are here today to finish sand painting everything that we can see that still needs to be sand painted because sand painting is such a messy job that our floor is filthy, but there's no point in cleaning it because if we're just going to keep sand painting, it's just going to get dirty again. So today we're going to try to finish all the sand painting in the zoo that still needs to be done. And then tomorrow we clean. You know how to clean? Only when I want to. I mean, no, look how bad of a job I'm doing. Can you clean our house? Oh, oh, really? That's that was the pile. At home. That was the pile. Yeah, you don't have me clean at home. Cause look, I'm incompetent when it comes to cleaning. Uh-huh, yeah, that's not an excuse. <laughs> Keep cleaning. Okay, but in all seriousness, look at how clean it's the zoo is. <laughs> but I mean, compared to what it used to be, look at this. It's open now. Not really thanks to Ed over there, but instead thanks to our friends Jackson, who already left for the day. And huge thanks to Carrie. Thank you. You're welcome. So much <laughs> for this. This took like all day. While I was editing, Carrie and Jackson were out here cleaning. And I just came out from being back there for like three, four hours. And this is awesome. Well, to end today's video, or our update today, I think we're just going to walk through the building and show you what's new, even though you've already seen most of it. But up here in the retail area, there's not a ton new. It's running really well, it seems, and we have a ton of merch now, so I figured yeah. I'd show you that. Like, this whole have... island is merch? Yeah, this whole thing is merch. And we now have, like, tumblers and fun stuff, and we have tie-dye shirts that we're gonna have, and we have tons of designs now, so we finally branched out, which I'm pretty excited about. We actually get most of the merch in our store from a wonderful animal rescue and zoo called Misfit Animal Ranch. You should totally go check them out on uh, Facebook and YouTube, but that's where we get like the glitter shirts and all that fun the stuff from. The dark shirt down the, there. Yep, that comes from them too. Yeah. So it's been fun working with them because it's another small, like it's another rescue that we can get our merch from. So yeah. anyway. And Kim um, also redesigned this, just be all shirts. Yeah, all of the shirts are now here. So that's pretty cool. We have yeah. magnets 
and cool stickers and uh yeah i guess that's enough of a shameless plug let's go into the zoo yeah, all right don't mind all the packages on the counter yeah it's tuesday we're not open so yeah. it's a mess yeah we get a lot of packages in the zoo as you can see it's open it's clean thanks to jackson Nish. and carrie yeah cleanish i guess <laughs> next we have to do the turtle tank enclosure we have to finish off the uh the island here the basking platform yep. and ed has the filtration all set up for yep. the all three tanks all three tanks yep we get to decorate soon now that it's clean we can decorate and go through this palette of plants that we bought just for decorating the enclosures with so that's pretty cool uh we have a rock we have to do something with that rock yeah, that's a storage rock it and is don't you have one at home <laughs> doesn't everyone have a yeah, storage, rock? storage rock yeah there's the filter Ooh, filter! We ended up getting Fluval FX6 filters because they are like super heavy duty filters, not sponsored just, or anything. But I like those filters and they can handle a large volume of water. So yep. they should do the job, I think. Yep, I think so. Sand painting is pretty much done. Isn't that crazy? That's insane. There's still a handful of little things, but I think we'll just be taking care of that like the day before opening. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> we have to add foam to the tunnel. Yes, we have to add the foam base. Yes, the padded base. So we don't hurt our knees. Now there's a rock. But other than that, Rex is cool. I mean, I have to sit in, I have to get in there and push down the other side because that side's down, but that side's not. So got to do that still. Yep. And then we have to install the lights still in some of these. We're waiting. Yep. We ordered all the Arcadia lights. Now we just have to wait for them to arrive and then we can put them all in place. We do have a tracking number though. So that's nice. Hey, they were shipped. Yeah. Oh, the Universal Rock sign got a little bit of uh, decoration. Yeah, Carrie did that. Oh, that's cool. Now you can't see the concrete bag. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> in here, here is there will be a whole video about this process but i think it will it have been out by now should we show them mm, i don't think it i don't think been. it'll be out yet either oh so we can't show you the invert yeah. cave it looks a lot darker in there though and you can see some lights on this oh, side that's crazy mysterious yeah. i wonder what it looks like but now we have to go over here You're gonna unfortunately have to wait. Well, thank you guys so much for watching today's uh, facility update number 17, I think we're at. Jeez, this is crazy. Yeah, this project was much bigger than we initially thought. But yeah, I thought it was going to be done like a year ago. I thought so too. And yet here we are. But it's finally taking shape. Things are finally wrapping up. We're just tying some loose ends. And now we get to decorate some things in the zoo. Yeah, we're so. also getting some bow fronts. We have one. It's in back. Well, we ordered four bow fronts and you can only order the Zilla bow fronts from Amazon. And we received the four and three of them were broken when they yeah. arrived. Oh man. Really? That's the glass. You can move the box. And you hear broken glass. This is the third one that's broken. So we have one bow front. Yeah. And we have reordered three more. Yep. So we'll see how that goes. There's <laughs> it's like one step forward, one step back. You know, we're kind of In this instance, three steps back. Three steps back. Yeah. yeah. But that's okay. Complaining won't make it get any better, so no. we're still moving forward. <laughs> And it's, it's also, that's rain. <laughs> it is pouring outside. That yeah, is. All right, well, I think we're going to wrap up the video then. I guess. <laughs> there isn't really a whole lot new in back, but we will be getting into that really soon because we are getting close to the enclosure build-off that we are going to yes. host here at the facility. Paul actually dropped off the enclosures for the contest, and they are being stored in the classroom right now, and we'll have more details to come. But thank you all again for watching today's video. Thank you to our very generous Patreon backers, who have allowed us to do so much with this facility and it being a bigger project than we initially thought, you've made this all still possible for us. So thank you and thank you to everyone watching our videos and we'll see you next time.